Well, my name is Muriel Hasbun. Uh, I'm an artist originally from El Salvador, but based in Washington, D.C. My piece is uh, called Ex Post Facto 11.3, and it is part of a body of work that is based on an archive of x-rays, of dental x-rays that belonged to my father, who was a dentist in El Salvador, and that I used um, as a way to think about the emotional repercussions and impact of trauma, especially because of the Civil War in El Salvador, um, on the body. And so I imagine these pieces that belong to my father's um, uh, patients in general as a way of thinking about the impact that trauma can have on the body of all of us who suffered um, trauma because of war and violence. Um, and so the piece is, is one particular you know, view which I see kind of as a landscape. Um, and so all of them are thought of as landscapes and I selected them over, you know, 32 pieces that I, that I made part of the body of work. I um, selected them from hundreds of, of x-rays, just kind of thinking about that, like how it very kind of intuitively thinking about how these evoked a la an internal landscape that um, if we could see inside the body through the accumulation of all of our experiences, what would it look like? And so this particular piece um, has um, you know, something that appears to be like a broken totem or you know, which if we know that they are teeth, um, we know that it's like fragile and broken. And, um, and so that is a great metaphor to think about how it is that violence can affect our, our way of being in the world. After I had been in El Salvador as a Fulbright scholar, um, and I went to the eastern part of the country to the Museo de la Revolución, which is a small uh, museum um, that was done in the eastern part in Perkin, which was kind of the base of the left, um, leftist guerrillas during the war. And also, um, so anyway, so I went to this museum and I saw a photograph of a woman who was my cousin, um, Janet Samur Hasbun, who had joined the guerrilla movement as a young woman. Um, and it was like this kind of lightning bolt in a way of like seeing her photograph because I, being like 10 years younger than her, um, only remembered her as a beauty queen because she was this beautiful woman. And, um, she, you know, as a, as a young idealist woman, she had gone into the guerrilla movement and became a comandante, comandante Filomena. And so at that moment when I saw the photograph, I um, remembered that my father, who was a dentist, had been asked to identify her body when she was captured and killed. Even though he had never um, had her as a patient, it, um, it just, like the whole process made me think of all of those who had died during the war and um, how it is that, you know, we, we are, you know, we have our ideals and we have, um, she wasn't like exactly remembered for what she had done, especially in her family. I mean, she was remembered, but nobody talked about her. And so the whole idea of like how it is that we transmit all of these traumas or not transmit because we silence them because they're too painful um, was also part of it. And given that my other work deals with the transmission of trauma through the generations um, is, is also kind of um, relevant here. So in terms of resistance, I think that the idea of remembering is a way of resistance and that um, also naming or, um, or you know, just kind of claiming somebody's um, story, um, thinking about somebody's story and how it is that we all fit into that um, to create um, some sort of connection or sense of empathy or solidarity is a way of resistance as well. And um, for me, I mean, personally, specifically, it was, you know, thinking first of 
Jeanette's story as a woman who believed in her ideals, even though we may or may not agree with her politics, it didn't matter. The fact that she was a woman who stood for what she believed in was really important for me to remember her. And then as, as a, just as someone who grew up in a time of strife in El Salvador and had to leave because of that, and um, also, um, you know, knowing that the effects of all of what happened during the war and even before um, is still part of the issue that, that is a huge challenge to the region and to El Salvador. I think that the idea of being able to know our history and to remember it and to name it and to communicate it and to share it with others is a form of resistance because we cannot stand and continue creating a new future if it's silent. It's wonderful to be next to other artists who are also exploring these very difficult issues and um, trying to represent from within our communities. I think it's a really important thing and I thank the Museo for being in, you know, in the show and in the collection and for including it in this moment in time. I think it's really important to have um, a voice, um, and especially since, in a way, I do represent El Salvador in this collection, in whichever way. I don't know how many other Central Americans there are in the collection, but I think that it's really important to have that represented now at this time um, of difficulty, especially for Central Americans who really need to be understood and counted for.